yesterday uh, from the Department of State that three races uh, were being ordered to have a statewide uh, machine recount. What that process entails is rescanning all of the ballots that were tabulated uh, as part of the election. So we have basically three different buckets of ballots. Um, we have early vote, early in-person vote. We have vote by mail, what we used to call uh, absentee. Uh, and then finally, we have election day. Uh, and so our intention is to rescan them in, that, in, in, in those categories. So in other words, we're not going to bring in some early votes and then bring in some election day and then bring in, we're going to get, we're going to go through, we're going to begin with early vote. We're going to go completely through all the early votes and then we will decide uh, which likely it would be uh, election day next and then uh, the final would be the uh, vote by mail ballots. Um, what that process entails, first thing is going to have to happen is um, a logic and accuracy testing uh, of the uh, voting equipment. What we are using, we use high-speed tabulators to, to do everything. The high-speed tabulators are initially used uh, for the vote-by-mail ballots, uh, but we, we will also use them to rescan the election day and early vote ballots. And that's all going to be conducted in this room. Again, one uh, group at a time. Uh, they're refed through the tabulator, the, the DS850 uh, tabulator, it is programmed to what we call outstack, that's an election term, outstack overvotes and undervotes according to what the machine sees as said overvote and undervote. Overvote is where the machine is reading more than one choice in a particular contest. You have one is three choices, one race is three choices, another race is two choices, and the other is multiple. And the governor's race has multiple choices. So if the, if the machine is picking up a choice in more than one, it's going to put it in the middle bin. Basically, it's going to outstack it. It's going to count the other contests that it reads a proper vote for, but it's going to outstack in that middle bin the, the, a ballot that's reading an overvote or an undervote for one or more of the contests on said ballot. Um, in addition, it will look for undervotes. It's not detecting a vote. Looking in the ovals, it's not detecting a vote for either choice or any choice on, in said race. Blank ballot, somebody just skipped the race, what have you. That also will go into that middle bin. Those ballots that are in that middle bin are the ones that are held separately. Those, they're preserved for uh, the possibility of a manual recount. Uh, again, it, when a manual recount scenario, what is being reviewed is not every single ballot. It's just those outstacked ballots. So you're reviewing overvotes and undervotes. Again, that process does not begin until we get an order from, uh, if and when we get an order from the Division of Elections, the Secretary of State, uh, after the machine recount is completely, um, is completely done. Um, so what will then happen is those ballots will, again, be segregated and will be kept separately uh, in these boxes. Uh, the ballots, the good ballots, the ballots that have been scanned and there's no issue with them, they're going to go immediately into our storage boxes where they're going to be stored unless they have to be reopened for some reason uh, for the 22-month retention period. Uh, so they're, they're gonna, that's going to happen right here in this room. And they're going to be sealed up and they're going to stay that way uh, until they're destroyed 22 months uh, from now. So that's the general process um, that we'll go through. Yes. Just because I, I overheard some, some questions, I'll just make yeah. sure that it's clear. You're not doing the races. So you're not doing all the ballots for one race and then doing them all again for the next race. You're just doing all three of the recounted races. <coughs> so again, what's going to happen? Uh, so, uh, some visuals. so if you have a ballot and you have, it's, it's only looking at those three races. And you, see we've got a report where the our initial report results report or zeros report as we call it would have on every single race on it. now it's just down to those three um, and so the only thing that the, that the tabulator is looking at is those three contests 
So if it's got stray marks or overboats or underboats or anything in any other contest, don't worry about it. It's just looking at those three specific contests. Um, and it is counting all three of them at the same time. Just like it, in a normal, it counts everything on the ballot at the same time. It's counting those three, three ballots, I mean, those three contests simultaneously, okay? Um, and then what it's doing is it's outstacking that middle bin. It's outstacking anything it sees in any of the three races. You can have two properly marked races and one that is reading as either an overvote or an undervote. It's going to go in the middle bin. Okay? Those then, if and when we get to a manual recount, the, that middle bin will have to be rescanned to segregate out the overs, votes, and undervotes for that particular contest. Okay, it's, it's like a filtering, if you will. It starts off big because it's got overvotes and undervotes for all three contests. So then we get through, and let's say just one of the races goes to a machine recount, I mean a, a manual recount. At that point, you would take that subset of ballots that were outstacked, run, we reprogram the equipment again, run it through, and then it's going to say, okay, which one of these were outstacked for the U.S. Senate race? And then it would segregate them off. And then we would go move forward with the, with the manual recount of that particular contest. If there was more than one, we complete that, take all those back, and then rerun them again, programmed for the second race. So then that filter, basically you're refiltering it, but you're looking for something else. Sounds more complicated than it is, but that's that, that not only is that the only way we can do it, but that's the way that's specifically uh, set forth in the administrative rule uh, of how that process uh, moves forward. There will be occasions, uh, no idea how often, where there will be a ballot that the machinery can't read because of a stray mark or something, uh, a code channel, that will be presented to the canvassing board and the ballot will have to be duplicated, likely have to be duplicated to be able to run through uh, the equipment. Um, that's just the, the, what has to happen in order for the ballot to be included in the initial machine recount. And those will be reviewed by the campus, each and every one of those that come through. Um, so, the first thing that, uh, with your uh, permission, uh, go ahead and, and begin the logic and accuracy testing because that's going to take a little while uh, and then at that point we can uh, maybe while that's happening we can do that. Any questions from the canvassing board? Okay, these are the zeros reports from the logic and accuracy test. Also for the what we're going to use to we're going to use the same logic and accuracy testing materials that we use for the for the uh, primary, I mean for the uh, general election, regular election, use the same balance. Let's be recording these seal numbers.
record. Um, go ahead. Um, John Ingrid, David Stevens are one of the staff members. Sonia Daniels is a staff member uh, of mine. Well, a lot of other folks are going to be coming in and assisting uh, in the process. Is this the logic and accuracy? This is a logic and accuracy test. Are the attorneys permitted to observe the machine? What's Looking at is this middle, this little row here. For uh, yeah, so basically you have to. First of all, let's let's confirm what these are saying. Thank you. 
taking the results from the tabulators and reading them into the collection management system where we're getting the combined results for the LNA test. That's to ensure both the machinery as well as the Just so you know, we are allowed restroom breaks and breaks to eat. And so as long as we are not adjudicating ballots, two out of the three members need to be present for the recount. Uh, only all three of us need to be present when we're actually uh, adjudicating the ballots, looking for uh, the under overs and making a determination of the vote. So if you see one of us stepping out, that's okay. <laughs> Which is hint that you're about to see me. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, logic and accuracy test uh, came out as, as expected. Uh, hey, Dave? Yes, sir. How are the results going to be uh, reported today? How are the results going to be reported today? The results will be reported when we complete the uh, machine recount process, uh, which will be probably not today. Uh, we have 130 plus thousand ballots to get through uh, using two uh, tabulators. We certainly anticipate uh, going into tomorrow. That's what we, when we advertised, we, we anticipated going into uh, tomorrow. So it wouldn't be until after the complete machine recount process uh, is completed that we would uh, report the results up to the state. Okay, and will they re be reported out by precinct again? They, they'll, they'll be reported by in buckets. They'll, they'll be re 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 they will be reported by um, early vote, early vote, vote by mail, uh, and that that's the method of reporting up to the state. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah, we have until Thursday at three. Uh, I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go until it gets done. So, uh, that's why we're going to, you know, this is the first time we've, we, we've, I don't know, the state's never had three uh, statewide recounts ever. Um, and so this is new for everybody. Um, so we're going to start with the vote by mail ballots. Um, and thank you. We're going to start with the early votes. Uh, and go from there. So, these are good. Go ahead. And, um, okay, let's add them. Let's see what we can do. 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 Let's see what we can do.
sealed up. What we, we use the same test ballots that we use for the general election. Uh, we, we just we reprogram, we have to reprogram to tell, tell it to exclude all of the other races uh, on the ballot. Uh, but you still have, rather than create a whole new test deck, you just use those, we just use those ballots. Uh, and it's just counting those three races. And they go back in the box and locked up. And they're locked up and say, hold on, uh, let's make sure we go. Hold on, before you do that. I gotta get the materials in there. Yes. Okay. That's why that, those have been locked and sealed in, since the primary. Since <laughs> the primary. Since the since the general election logic and accuracy test back in the middle of uh, uh, October. Second box is the same as it was earlier. Did you report the seal numbers? Yeah, we reported the new seal. We reported the new seal numbers. Okay. Along with the seal number for the election. Sure. I heard it read out earlier, and not the yeah. second time. That's why I was. Thinking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See just for the next you're gonna see two um, um, carts come in here, wire wire carts. Um, they're gonna represent two different early voting locations. One of the machines is gonna work solely on a single uh, early voting site, the other uh, machine is gonna work on the uh, on another early voting site. Um, the blue bag are the ballot bags, which have ballots in them from the early voting sites. The blue tub is where those outstacked ballots will be placed. Um, they're going to go in envelopes first, and then they're going to go inside uh, those blue tubs.
bags tabulated good ballots the ones that don't have an out a, a um, overvote or an undervote will go directly into the permanent storage boxes the others will go into the blue uh, tubs to be preserved for the um, in, in the event we have a machine recount I mean the main Where are y'all from? We're yeah. from around here. <laughs> For Republican, Democrat, independent? Uh, I'm not independent, but I'm here on behalf of the Florida Democratic Party, so I'm non party affiliated, but Nelson asked me to be here, so I'm here. <laughs> What's your story? Uh, I do a radio show. Oh, okay. I host the uh, Pensacola Morning News. Oh, okay, great. 1620? That's right. Okay, yeah. I know who you are. Don't know your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Andrew. Nice yeah, to meet you. Yeah. Alistair. Alistair? Yeah. Alex Taylor. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you, Alex. Hopefully we won't have any hanging chads this year. <laughs> yeah. We've got a bigger problem since they're all optical scan ballots. So. Yeah. <laughs> now you got to worry about the people with, like, you know, hand tremors and mm -hmm. poor poor vision that can't quite manage to color inside the lines. Yeah. I bet they're going to get to a manual recount. I bet that's going to happen. That's where you need all hands on deck. Oh, yeah. With how close the Nelson and... Well, in agriculture, are. that's a lot, right? I mean... Yeah. What, 500 votes, I think, yeah. something around there? So it'll, it'll happen. It's just how many races are we counting, right? Correct. possible the machine recount may push going close enough for a uh, for uh, manual, recount, for manual yeah. recount. It's unlikely it'll push Nelson and Scott out. Um, that one's just too close as it is. Ooh. Yeah, Gillum's is just a Hail Mary. They don't really have a chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four was the margin. We did point two five. Mm -hmm. uh, a little misfeed. Was a crazy one. 
collection. It seems like such a simple thing until you get down to actually doing it. Yeah. And then everybody's had a paper jam in the copier, right? Yeah. This thing moves at like 1,500 times speed. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, so they just start that stack over. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's, what's up with each stack. I think the middle bin are the rejected over-unders. Yeah, I'm not sure what that top is. Yeah. That's a lot, or is it just two? Maybe it's just two. I think it looks just like a couple from here. Hey, I have a question. How do we know from that that they're not calculating the scores from football games last night? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, you can't like, really, you can't see them. The transparency would be in allowing one of you to actually see what's happening. So have any of them been spit out yet? Yeah, yeah there's the, the that, this is right that right middle bin, ones? that middle bin right there. There's like that one you just grabbed. Yeah, yeah he's grabbed. he's actually restarting the whole thing now because of the jam they just had. Yeah, they oh, just had a great paper jam. Well, see, I was wondering about those folded things, you know, when they're folded. I thought you folded your vote to make sure it got count extra. <laughs> is that not how it works? If you're feeling generous, you fill in all of the circles See, and vote for everybody. Yeah, you just fill them all in and then so you're going to So, oh, he's redoing them all? He's having to redo them all. Yep. So the undervotes and overvotes initially were all put into the same thing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, that particular contest. And in essence, it's kind of re rescanning those, and it's looking for the overboats and underboats that were outstacked just in that contest. It sounds more complicated than it is, but it's, it's basically like a second filter. Okay, but the, but the initial vote on the machine recount will include every vote it can grab. Correct. And it'll kick out inv invalidated ballots for any or all of the of Correct. those. And they're, they're mixed together, but the reason you can tell the difference is when you go through with a manual, you'll redo everything. They'll, they'll, they'll rescan the entirety of the, the outstacked ballots. So mm -hmm. in other words, let's say there's 5,000 outstacked and say 2,000 are for one race. It will segregate out those 2,000 for that one race and leave the other 3,000. But in the first process, they're not segregated. They're just, no, you don't know why they might have, be in there. You'd have to have 15 different bins to be able to do that. That still seems to me like there's room for mistake because it might not count it the first time, right. and then maybe it's just within enough wiggle room of the technology to count it the second so time. The ones that are spinning out on the top, uh -huh. those are the ones that the machine didn't read okay. properly the first time. It's like it's got a fold or a mark, or it's got something in the, bar the, right. the barcode or that whatever. It from reading it. Um, that's so the one they have to look at. That's the one. Yeah, I think they what they do is they try and see Spread if it's like that, something huh? obvious to, and they refeed it. Um, what does it mean when they write on top of it? Would, what was did you see where he was writing what he was writing uh you just put it in that bin on the top maybe that was a piece of paper that went with it I'm not those sure. are the ballots that they're storing putting in long-term storage so um, yeah those have okay. been read yeah those are the clean ballots yeah. no errors the ones that are coming through in the black printer oh it's coming through in the black printer is yeah. just the tabulated the summary um, okay. yeah so he's supposed to be signing that and then putting it presumably yeah, yeah he's probably marking it to say that he's mm -hmm. read it <laughs> She come over and tell her the press wants to talk to her. Uh, Jamarla wants to interview her. It's funny. I'm sorry, no. I didn't have my, didn't have my pin tip out, so I didn't write on you. So it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the, the real possibility for error is when they take those unreadable ballots and redo them manually. Yes. That's, uh, I think, going to be probably the most contentious point of all of that this. And that and looking at these ones that the machine doesn't read. Right, once they get to the manual and recount phase. Duplicating yeah. the ballots is a little interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, duplicating I mean, there, the ballots is going to be It awesome. seems to me like if you, if you run 10,000 ballots, there's got to be a percentage that will read wrong the first time to kick in Correct. and read right the second time. Yep. It's very possible, especially considering yeah, when you consider all these ballots were just handled by regular folks. They weren't necessarily, you know, to treating preserve, them like yeah. it's a copy of the Constitution, yeah. you know, so they're going to get folded up. You know, it's not unusual that folks make stray marks on them. I mean, heck, if you've ever done a Scantron test at a school, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you see how... Elbow smudges. Yeah, exactly. Now, my only question is, is why would... The availability of video recording. Do they not video record right above? That's a great video? question. This this should all be on video. You're Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Nothing else. It would save a lot of folks. Yes. Sure and, it and it would give, and it would give people peace of mind. They could watch remotely theoretically. I mean, there's all kinds of advantages to that. They're going to be sitting at that table duplicating a ballot. Like I would like to have a camera sitting right above there, right, ensuring that those right. two ballots. Are they going to start doing duplicating today? Do they? I can't recall if you That's only if we go to the manual, and that will be after everybody reports. No, no, no. They'll, the, so the ballots that, that don't read by the machine, they will get them all and sit there and duplicate the ballots if they can't. Oh, the top yeah. the top drawer, the ones that can't be read. I got you. And, again, I haven't read through the specific statutory provisions, but I believe basically there has to be a consensus, but I don't know if it's just a simple majority as to what the ballot should read, but that's where... That's who's the board? It's Al and Allison, and then is it? Um, who's judge Frederhovich. Judge Frederhovich. Allison's not on the board. She's just ah, there she's there. Yeah. Who is uh, the judge? I don't know. Uh, judge judge Frederhovich, right there. Oh, is the, okay, right there. good. Black dress with the brown. She was appointed to the circuit court by Rick Scott. Yeah, so I'm just going to read the statute for the board. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> Who is that? I can't remember his name. Yeah. 
White, I think it is. Mike, Mike White or something like that. I can't remember. But the good news is we've got David Stafford as our supervisor of elections, and he is he's really good. I've got a lot of faith in him. I could see that screen from here, but that's just yeah. I'm getting I'm getting to the age where my eyes aren't quite what they used to be. <laughs> I didn't get that PRK surgery my dad got. He went from having like as bad a vision as I did yeah. to like you know 2015. Yeah, I had 2015 vision until two years ago, and then it was like you need glasses. I was like, God Almighty! My vision's been poor. Since it seems so primitive to put them in a cardboard box. Yeah, I don't know does. why. And probably because you got a hold on to them for okay. 22 months. 